Hey everyone, happy Friday, happy first inaugural episode of Saligo's new show, CIO Live. I'm gonna be your host of the show, Lisa Martin. We are so happy that you're here. We've been working hard on this show to bring you some great content. And I'm very pleased to welcome the show's first ever guest, Asad Siddiqui, the CIO of Saligo to the program. Asad, it's great to talk to you today. Same here, Lisa, thanks for having me. We're gonna be talking about some great stuff in the next 15 to 20 minutes. We'd love to hear from you. So pop a question for Asad, pop a note in LinkedIn Live um, comment box here and we'll bring it into the conversation. We're gonna be talking about the future of automation, how to make automation a competitive advantage for your company. Exciting stuff. Asad, talk to me about the future of automation. What does it look like? Yeah, I mean, Lisa, before um, I share my thoughts on the future of automation, I want to share a few insights as to why automation is a buzz in the industry lately. You see, the pandemic and the great resignation have proven to be both revealers as well as accelerators for digital transformation. And digital transformation has become a very key strategy for a lot of organizations and also a competitive advantage for some. Uh, in fact, according to IDC, worldwide digital transformation initiatives are forecasted to reach 1.8 trillion by end of this year. That's a significant in increase from 2021. With the recession looming on us, uh, you could expect this to grow further. And you know, a lot of companies are adopting automation across the board, across business units. So we will see a lot of investments in this. The future of automation though is hyper automation. And Gartner defines hyper automation as a business driven approach that organizations use to rapidly one, identify, and then automate as many business and IT processes as possible. I'm sure the audience here want to learn how to get there. Uh, hyper automation for me involves like an orchestrated use of multiple technologies and platforms. It has business process management suites, packaged applications, an iPaaS platform, artificial intelligence, machine learning, RPA, and other low code, no code workflow automation tools all working together to achieve hyper automation across an organization's business process. In my experience, hyper automation is a journey, right? And a focused effort to achieve enterprise wide automation. So it's not going to be something that people can say, like, hey, I want to be a hyper automated company and go get it done in the night. So it's, it's a journey. It's going to take time. It has a focused effort and requires a lot of hard work. Absolutely. You talked about some of the compelling events, mm -hmm. the uh, the pandemic, for example, in terms of some of the things that are really catalyzing the future of automation. You talked about hyper automation. You talked about how Gartner defines it and some of the technologies that are going to be part of that. But it absolutely agree with you. It's a journey, as is digital transformation and a lot of the things that organizations mm -hmm. need to accomplish. But what is a good strategic way for organizations and CIOs in your peer group to think about hyper automation as a business strategy? Yeah, see, before getting started to create a hyper automated environment, organizations needs to first assess where they are in their journey of digital maturity as a company. Second, they need to set a strategy to move up on the maturity scale. This involves building a good understanding of core business processes optimizing those processes and then automating them. A lot of people may argue like, hey, optimizing processes is also automating. Like uh, for me, it's like, hey, first you need to understand what they are, are they best practices and then start automating them. The strategy to digital maturity and transformation is very essential here. As I said before, I mean, getting to a hyper automated environment requires time and prioritization and it needs to be a tops down directive from, from leadership. Definitely tops down. One of the things that, that I think we're seeing today in today's market is that siloed tools mm -hmm. are being implemented to solve mm -hmm. problems. Yeah. They solve a job here or there, but there's also some challenges that are created. Talk about what some of those problems are that siloed tools create and how can organizations overcome them? Yeah, great question. I've, I've, I've seen siloed tools um, everywhere that I've been at. Um, in my opinion, and I'm sure there are different perspectives here, Silo tools or sometimes called as point solutions are a good stopgap for solving a very specific business problem. In my experience, these play a very important role for business teams to experiment, to test a hypothesis or automate a small workflow. Uh, they help organizations be nimble at the same time, right? So they are very important to, to, to a company. On the other hand, if the goal is to automate a complex workflow or a cross-functional process, what I have advised is that these silo tools 
could create scale issues, operational overhead, and also if not implemented right, can create more process or technical debt. Here's a stat I think I read some, I read earlier this year. According to Gartner's prediction, by 2024, a siloed approach to automation, it will drive up initiative specific total cost of ownership by 40 fold. So that's a lot. I mean, so, so while these silo tools have benefits, they can also become a big problem to address down the line. And to answer your second part of the question, which is like, how do organizations solve the problem? I'll give you an example of the federated model that I've established here at Serigo. The reason for this federated model is to help our business teams move fast and experiment in what they're doing. By doing so, we create one autonomy and then reduce the dependencies on my technical teams. But this happens with a very clear governance structure, right? We collaborate with the business, we assess the scope of a tool, and once we establish the scope and, and we know that it's a very concentrated specific scope and the tool, if it meets our security and st compliance standards, we give the tool a go ahead. We do have a process later to revisit the utilization, reassess the scope. If the scope has changed, we take action accordingly, right? And generally this approach has been very successful for me as it's a win-win for all. Talk about some of the business challenges and organizations implement the strategies that you're talking about and go on this automation journey, which they should do for obvious reasons, reduction of technical debt, competitive advantage. Yeah. What are some of the key overarching business problems that automation will help companies to solve? Yeah, um, see automation if done right, provides uh, tangible benefits to organization who choose to make it as part of their strategy. It has to be a strategy. I mean, I've, 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 I cannot emphasize that more, right? Um, so first, automation allows businesses to do more with fewer resources. Uh, again, there's a buzz out there, do more with less, and automation allows that. Second, it shifts resources from low-level admin work, doing more strategic growth of business work. It also helps in reducing errors in, um, in manual human-dependent workflows, right? With automation, organizations can create a phenomenal customer experience by connecting every touch point on the customer journey and then engaging with the customers in ways that create a great product experience as well as a direct human experience. Lastly, uh, automation can help ensure employees are supported and empowered at work. See, according to a research that I read um, done across global companies, 37% of overall staff is saying that their companies are asking too much of them. So this is where all of the automations, if done right, can help businesses uh, and overcome these challenges. To help improve, empower employees, improve employee productivity directly relates to customer satisfaction. So it's really a no brainer for organizations to mm -hmm. do that. So with that said, Asad, dissect an automated environment. We've got all these different tools here. What does that yeah. look like from the CIO's perspective and then from the end user's perspective? Awesome question. So, um, in my in my in my experience, and I'm I'm sure I'm oversimplifying here for us, right? Um, an automated environment would have a combination of best of breed architectures with some low code, no code tools for the business technologists to leverage for automating their workflows. And business technologists, in this case, for me, it's not just the IT, the technology, the engineering team. It's the it's the business teams who are also tech and data savvy. Um, so, so what that means is like, this doesn't mean that we need a sprawl of SaaS tools to be working in tandem to make it happen from a CIO's perspective. It means scaling the organization to achieve digital maturity and setting our foundation to groundwork breaking innovations from an end user perspective, as I said, right, it means reducing the admin work, focusing towards the customer, focusing front facing and focusing, doing more strategic work. So the, the latter part of your question, which is like, how does automation become a competitive advantage, right? If you, have, if you have a great enterprise automation strategy working for you, it can play a critical role in differentiating an organization from its competitor. How? Well, increased business productivity means accelerated time to market. Improved efficiencies means service delivery to customers would be awesome. Data automations, provide greater insights to business performance and then customer interactions. Productivity also means your engineering team, product team are focusing on more on product innovation to gain that competitive advantage. Above all, I think automation brings 
where improved collaboration, engagement, and morale of employees then would be very high. All of these together can help an organization really differentiate and be a leader in their own industries they are in. Yep. And that differentiation in today's market is absolutely critical. We saw so many pivots in the last couple of years from organizations, those rapidly approaching uh, digital transformation, trying to get to digital maturity and what that means in their organizations. But when you talk about productivity, Asad, this isn't just a marketing term. The way that you described it, you did a great job of really talking about the significant positive business outcomes mm -hmm. that improved productivity can drive. And we're talking top line, we're talking bottom line. So looking at automation as an investment to get to that digital maturity is seems like really a must have mm -hmm. vision for CIOs yep. these days. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And I think, I think, I mean, um, it, as I said, right, I mean, uh, an, an automation or a transformation strategy um, it has to it has to come from an from an exec and leadership level, uh, and it has to has a clear benefit and ROI to the business. Um, and I think uh, it's not an overnight thing. Um, if you look at every business unit out there, uh, they have their own business processes. Um, and today, if one IT team cannot solve their automations, they need capabilities to do it themselves. And that this is where some of these low-code, no-code solutions and easy-to-use data ingestion and data migration tools come into play where they allow, they allow uh, business units to connect data to processes, to systems, so that their jobs at the end of the day are very efficient and they can focus more on like growing the business. You're and every, everybody wants that, right? People want to be able to move the mundane tasks off their plate to be able to use data, every company these days, you could say has to be a data company, has to be a software company, has to mm -hmm. be able to extract value from that data. But at the end of the day, the employees want to be doing work that is highly impactful to mm -hmm. their line of business and to the overall top line of the company. So I kind of see the future of automation, Asad, as you're describing it, to really be a facilitator of something that's really hard to achieve across mm -hmm. industries and that's IT business alignment, empowerment, enabling IT to deliver what the business needs. So the business units can deliver what the overall organization mm -hmm. needs to deliver to be differentiated, to be a competitor in today's market. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, and I really think like, I mean, CIOs, um, and the role, the role has shifted significantly over, over the past decade or so. Um, it's not an IT strategy anymore, right? It's a business-driven technology strategy from a CIO's perspective. Um, I recently presented um, my strategy um, at Saligo uh, for, for next year, and it's really focused on enabling the, the business value chain across the board uh, from, a, from a technology standpoint, right? Uh, but again, the approach comes from a business lens, uh, where automation obviously is is a, is a key is a key component of success for that strategy. And talk about how did you get buy-in? So so for your peers who are watching this, mm -hmm. how did you get buy-in across the the lines of business to be able to, for for your strategy? I always love to understand from the CIO's perspective the integration mm -hmm. uh, with the business users. Yeah. Um, see, I think I think the the key here is. Um, the, the buying has to happen at the exec level. As I said, like any automation or digital transformation strategy requires investments, right? Um, and these investments um, happen when, when the businesses understand a clear benefit and an ROI to them, right? And what it means in terms of growing the business, because at the end of the day, each of these business teams have, a, have an objective and have a, have a strategy that they have to achieve. Um, what I have done basically is a set of things uh, uh, to, to get buy-in overall, right? One is like create a business-driven strategy. Second is understand what is foundationally required to get uh, value for money in terms of what investments we make to our foundational systems and technology. Uh, third is like understanding where the company is in terms of maturity and how much process and technical debt exists today. And then where do we need to create that value-add impact, right? Uh, and I think once we have this top-down directive uh, and the executives are bought in, it's very important to next have, um, I would say, business process expertise, as well as cataloging business processes becomes very crucial to kick off your automation journey, right? Um, along with that, employee mindset shift needs to happen. Embracing automation environment is very important for adoption and success of automation, right? 
So if employees are not bought in or the teams are not bought in, I think you will see resistance to, to change. At the end of the day, I think automation is going to bring uh, more value to the work that you're going to create. So if they, if, they, if they support automation, I think it's going to help them excel in their jobs too. So my suggestion would be to work on this early in the process and get people on board. What I have achieved success in is creating a learning environment to grow and develop business technologies across business teams. And that will help in create, accelerating the automation efforts. So this also helps in IT as he's pointed out, right? Is to have a successful transition to being a center of excellence and become enablers to the business versus a centralized approach to automation which is not going to scale as fast as, as, as an organization wants to be. So at Saligo, I mean, we are on an exciting path to execute on this ourselves. It sounds like it. I mean, we're all going to have to keep our eyes peeled on this space. My last question for you, Asad, in the remaining few minutes that we have is, you talked about the buying, you talked about essentially culture. How, what's your advice to your peers to create an automation culture that will really allow the business to achieve its goals and extract ROI? from its automation journey. Yeah, I think I think the culture the culture comes from uh, one is um, starting starting iteratively, right? You have to prove the value of automation. Uh, get go, yes, at the exec level, um, people will have that understanding, folks have experience, folks have seen things done differently. So you'll get the buy-in. But you don't go in all guns blazing and say that, hey, I'm, I'm going to bring these 20 automation tools, put it in various different processes and make it work. No, it's not going to be successful. So what you got to do is start in a very iterative fashion, prove uh, a specific area uh, or a business, business process, prove, prove it out and say like automation is working and can scale. And then start adding on other business processes and other tools to connect and work in cohesion in that in that in that process, and that's where this this terminology hyper automation, this term that has been coined, that comes into play is like a mix of orchestration of all these tools working together. And then just imagine, I mean, you have all these 15, 16 tools which you say like these are my hyper automation tools. They have to be sitting in every business unit and working very seamlessly for the business. Right, uh, and again, I mean, I, IT or technology teams cannot do it all together. That's why the, that's why I'm I'm really focused on creating more business technologists to get on board along with us and help out with this automation and accelerate that. Yeah, that, that really empowering those business technologists. Asad, it sounds like you have, well, first of all, you have great advice for explaining what the future of automation looks like, how organizations can get there compared to where they are now. And also some great advice on strategic thoughts of, uh, of, a, of an automation strategy, that journey, which is very inclusive of the cultural adoption of that mm -hmm. mindset. We're gonna watch this space and we wanna know from you in the audience, drop us a note, this will be on demand after our live show is finished. Where are you on your automation journey? What advice do you need? And what did you take away from today's conversation? Asad, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on our inaugural show of CIO Live. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, thanks for having me. And I'm excited to also share with you next Tuesday, November 8th, 10.30 a.m. Pacific, the CIO of eBay joins me. Going to be talking about the changing role of the CIO from reactive to proactive to assertive. Want to know where you are on that journey. Don't forget to set your clocks back this weekend if you're in those time zones. We thank you so much for joining us on our first show. I'm Lisa Martin for Assad Siddiqui. We'll see you Tuesday. Bye.